decided to come back here. It's been about two years. Janie's furnace, and um, after reading, going through the narrative of how this place was never used, I wanted to come back and check it out again. Picked up this brick right here. The furnace was constructed by Montgomery businessman Alfred A. Janey, reportedly using slaves brought from Tennessee by Dr. Smith. It's always interesting how they recruit all these enslaved or slave people to build these, to construct these incredible structures. Not to mention how heavy these megalithic blocks are. So the furnace was completed and ready to produce pig iron when on July 14, 1864, a Union cavalry raiding force of 2,300 men, led by Major General this guy. So basically they're saying they came in before they actually started producing it and destroyed the chimney of the furnace only leaving the stone structure in place. They also burn all the wood buildings intended to support operations of the furnace. The scroll on down, according to experts who have studied the Janie's furnace remains, it is unlikely that the iron was actually produced here. The lining of the stack was not fired black and examinations of the area and furnace itself have found no remnants of charcoal or slag to indicate that the ironworks ever operated. This is the most likely explained by the fact that the federal forces reached the area not long after the furnace was completed. So they're saying it was never used. I went inside the museum just right down the, the road and the first question I asked was, do you have any old pictures of this furnace? Because I can't find anything. The gentleman said, no, um, there's nothing. He showed me this. He said, this is all we've got. It's a rendition, a painting of what supposedly it looked like before this got burnt down. That's it. There's nothing on it. Absolutely no old pictures. So I'm at the top of the furnace here walk around all the way goes uphill to here with a bunch of signs so when you look the narrative up it says and has been tested I don't know how long ago but that it was never used built in like a year and never used but here we have these signs stating basically that it was in use. Uh, it's just telling you about the iron ore. And here the furnace was a supposed, oh, I'm sorry, supported by a nearby community, which a direct result of the furnace became virtually self-sufficient. Self-sufficient, it was never used. It would have included cabins for the slaves and other laborers, a blacksmith shop, General store, church, and cemetery. The exact site of this community is unknown, but will hopefully be located through future archaeological, archaeological, I can't say that word, archaeological. Anyway, through investigations. Tongue tied today. So you've got these signs. On down this little path, explaining telling you basically that this this was used but it wasn't and on down here so you have this supposed furnace this huge wall wraps around this big big gully down here it stops and they call it this poor and blow house, blower house. 
It was dug by hand, provided water system to the engine that powered large bellows located on the sides of the furnace. These bellows stuck the intense fire needed to smelt the iron ore. The blower house covered the steam engine, sheltering it from the elements and made equipment maintenance easier. Wait a minute. I, don't, I thought it wasn't ever used. It's been tested by your scientists, right? Why do we have all these signs telling you how it was used? You chills. This is all the same structure. This is a pocket of survival. This was left over and they just put a stupid narrative on it and all these stupid signs. And here's an excellent question for those archeologists that said that this was never used. Here's a brick with major heat damage. These bricks are all over the place. You can see one over here actually, it's laying on the ground. But this has changed. How can you say that there was no heat going on at this place? They contradict themselves. This is all over the place. Another shot of that brick. See what's going on here? It's all changing from major heat. Here's the kind of stuff that's right on the outside of these huge blocks. This is just leftover brick. So we're climbing up here. Obvious brick there. As you can see, the, the brick is in between the block. way all oh, this is brick right there you would never put huge boulders and blocks and stuff bricks all in between them it's transitioned this whole thing is coming over Bricks up there. All the way down. And you have boulders on top. Huge boulders down here. The corner of this huge block looking a little suspicious here. Here's a pick. Uh, got inside as close as I could. Bars everywhere, but this is the inside of the supposed furnace. You can see how this whole wall is pushing over from all this in the back. It's expanding out in the back. It's flooding out from whatever cataclysm happened. The bricks continue. They go all the way down here and all the way around these huge boulders. 
which was once brick like this. Close up shot of this iron that comes out of it at all the corners, totally twisted. This here, to me, this is what the brick changed into, all this stuff around it. You have just a little bit left, left over, noticeable red. This was brick. You continue up here, obvious brick. This is obvious brick. It's merged with this whole thing. It's almost blocked up like these beside them. More brick here. On this side, you have it, the brick starting, which this whole thing was brick, goes all the way down. So I'm going to make reference to, to this certain spot. So you have all these bricks and you either have the mortar or melting of, of other parts of the building. And you can see that this is, this brick is like half gone. But what I want to show here is just say this was all blocked up and you can see where the, the bricks are, the mortar's gone. And if this was all blocked up, you would have these little indentions. As you can see right here, this brick, it's gone down. This is all merging, melting, changing all into one boulder, and you still have the impressions. Okay. I highly doubt that they got slaves and went to some quarry somewhere in 1863 and burrowed this out with this brick impression in it and put it up here 50 feet high when they had bricks right here. You see how this, it's bouldering out, it's expanding out, it's pushing all this brick, just like this big piece here, and you can still see the lines going through this so-called boulder. It's all changing. It was all once brick. See some here, and they go down through here. Also right here. Mangled. And here is some right there. It looks extremely heat damaged. Runs all the way through the structure. I wanted to go back here after reading that it was supposedly never used, which actually completely doesn't make sense considering all the cooked out brick everywhere. Look at all the brick. This scorched on the ends. This is all changed. To me, it's just sounding like the uh, they're just putting a narrative on what was founded. Everything was found. Nothing was built. All these historical sites, they mainly lead to maybe a few old pictures and some words on a page. 
That's it. But if we look closely at these structures, we can tell that something definitely has happened to them that really we can't even recreate today. They're just assuming that the slaves and donkeys and carts or whatever just constructed all these buildings. And when you have brick, obvious brick everywhere, and then you claim to use all these stone, huge megalithic boulders, stones from quarrying or whatever. But in reality, it looks like to me, this is all brick structure and it changed. I appreciate everyone out there. I'm going to leave you with some pictures from the museum next to this. Thanks to all y'all out there and much love.